All right, yo guys, I'm gonna start posting like easy to medium uh, algorithms and data structure problems, uh, either in Julia, Python, or C++. So this one is called Electronic Shop, and we're going to attempt to do this. I'm doing this like the first time I've seen it, so we might run into problems, but let's go ahead and read the problem statement. A person wants to determine the most expensive computer keyboard and USB drive that can be purchased with a give with a given budget given price list for keyboards and USB drives and a budget find the cost to buy them if it is not possible to buy both items return negative one so it's not if we can't just buy one it's find the cost to buy them yeah if we can't buy either or both of them um we return negative one so b i'm guessing is budget which is 60 and then we have a little vector of keyboards, 40, 50, 60, and vector of drives. Um, person can buy a keyboard, a $40 keyboard, and a $12 drive for 52, or a 50 plus 8. So we want to maximize. Person wants to turn the most expensive. Yeah, so when you see the things like the most or the least, you want to maximize or minimize. Choose the latter um, as it is the most expensive option, and then return 58. Okay, so let's get rid of these comments. My initial thought is to do like a... A brute force approach and we have like an int c max is negative one we have c max because this is the default that we're going to return if if we can't find a better price and then let's loop through every keyboard and let's loop through every drive and then let's say if k plus d is less than or equal to our budget so the price of the two items added together cannot exceed our budget then we'll say c max is equal to c max or the two items together and then Maybe return, not, uh, let's return C max, yes, the largest. Um, expression result unused, oh, right, max of those. Um, so what what are the constraints? Because this scales, I mean, this, this runtime is O of N times M, which is quite poor. Um, it is the brute force approach, though. I don't want to over-engineer an easy problem. Let's see what the constraints are, though. A thousand. Yeah, so at most we're going to do a million iterations. It's not that bad. So let's see if we pass the test cases at least. Nice. Okay, and then I guess before we submit, let's engineer our own test case. That can be, we'll do like 100 by 100. Um, and then we'll do, so here's, do these have to be distinct? No, wait, no. Okay. So we'll just take these five, 10, 15, 20. All right. That's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay. I don't really care about like what solution I get out of this. I'm just, I'm doing like a stress test to see if it can handle 100 by 100. I'm not sure if it will accept this test case, but if it does, hopefully the runtime is fine. Yeah, so it, it compiled. Um, pretty large test case. I don't think they're going to have anything larger than that. So let's submit, see if we pass everything. Nice. Okay. Um, there might be a, well, there definitely is a smarter solution than brute force. Um, perhaps a greedy approach could work. Um, or you could do maybe some memoization with dynamic programming, but um, you, you really don't want to over-engineer a simple problem with, with pretty lax restraints. So I'm probably going to leave it at this uh, as the solution. Cool.